Okay, so we have a problem. In this problem, I have two hot streams and two cold streams. Uh, the first step was to calculate the load, which I found here by following this. We know that delta H equals CP delta T. Let me try to do one here. So let's do, for example, the load for C2. That is going to be what? It is going to be C2 would equal the CP, 5, multiplied by 140 minus 80. And this gives you 300 kilowatts. And it's there. So basically we follow this kind of method to find all the other values. After that, we do step 2, which is draw the temperature intervals. In this case, we need to scale the sides as to hot and cold. Capital T indicates that this is the, cold, the hot scale, which means this is your hot side. Small t indicates that this is a cold scale and this is your cold side. And you can guess from the naming that if you have a hot side, meaning all of your hot streams, H1, H2, and even if you have H3 and H4, they're all going to be represented as arrows in here. And if you have streams on the cold side, so C1, C2, and if you have C3 and C4, each one, each stream is going to be rep represented by an arrow in here. So, what did we do? We basically used the supply and target. You can think of it as supply is the starting point and the target is the ending point. So my starting point here was 180 and it goes to 60. So I went down up to the 60 line. Same idea with the rest. Let's do C2. So it starts with 80 and goes to 140. So C2 here is at 80 and it goes to 140. Okay? After this, we need to find, we do step 3, which is finding the summation of Q hot and the summation of Q cold. So, this is my hot side, and this is my cold side. And again, these are my intervals. Remember that an interval is between two lines. This is one interval. Two, one interval, two interval, three, four, five, and six. Okay? Then, you draw the same table basically for finding out the summation of the hot and cold and then we calculate the loads so the way we go about it is you look at say the first interval in this first interval are there any arrows yes there is one so we find the load of it again by applying the same rule cp is three I'm not writing units here to save space, but you get it. So 3, and the temperature that you are going to subtract is the temperature of the interval itself. So it's 180 minus 150, which gives you 90 kilowatts. Let's go to the interval on the cold side. There is nothing. This is why we put it as 0. When you have no arrows here, then you put it as 0. Let's do the next one. Next interval on the hot side is going to have two arrows. In this case, you need to add them up. You find the load for this one. So this load is going to be 1 multiplied by the temperature interval. 150 minus 145. Plus the load for this guy, which is going to be 3 150, multiplied by 150 minus 145. This would give you a value of 20. Same idea for all of the other loads for each interval, basically. After this, 
you want to draw what we call the cascade, which is step four. So this is a cascade. What we do is all of these values. Oh, let's see another color. Oh. So all of these values are going to be put in here. And all of these values, the summation of the cold is going to be the outlet, basically. So each interval is represented by a box, as we said in the previous videos. Right? So I have six intervals, which means you can expect six boxes. And the inlet is going to be the first interval, we have a summation, the hot summation of 90. And then 20, 220, 120, 20, and then 10. Same idea on here. Summation of all the colds. And then what we do is similar to the rule mass in equals mass out. In this case, let's do the first interval. It's going to be 0 plus, so a 0 by the way. 0 plus 90, which is going to equal 0 plus x, x being the residual. These arrows coming out of the box boxes is called the residual. So x is here is going to be 90. So we calculated the value of the residual for all of them. After this, you want to look at the largest negative value which in this case is what it is minus 80 how does this play a role well in this case it means that when you do the revised cascade you are going to say your q minimum for heating is going to be 80 with a plus sign and you are going to take this value and put it at top of the cascade. So this is the fourth step, the revised cascade, and the last one. So we took the largest negative value from the cascade in the third step and we put it at the top. And we changed the sign to a positive and we considered it the minimum value for heating. And then after that, we just do the same thing. We only change the we only change the R values in this case, but the inlet and outlet at the sides are still the same. So this is again the same formula with mass in equals mass out. But remember that this is in kilowatts, so it's not really masses, but the same idea. So it's going to be eighty plus ninety equaling zero plus x, x being the residual, which gives you an x value of 170. And the same idea for the rest. Now, when you get a value of 0, this is your pinch point. And you need to get this value at your revised cascade. Or if you get it before the revised, then that's great. But you should get it at the revised cascade. If you don't get it, then it means that you did something wrong in your calculations and you need to go back. So by this, I know that my Q minimum for heating is obtained. Q minimum for cooling is going to be 50 kilowatts. The last value. And for the pinch point, you want to find the temperature on the hot scale and the cold and on the cold scale. And to get this, we go back to here, when we did the temperature intervals. It told me from the cascade that it's between intervals 3 and 4, because each box in the cascade represents an interval. So it means we have this line. And the temperature for this line is 90 and 80. 90 on the hot scale and 80 on the cold scale. So 
By this, we found the pinch point. We also found the Q minimum for heating and Q minimum for cooling. The step after this would be in part two, where we do the matching. And in this step, you are going to have to draw the streams, which we have H1, H2, and C1 and C2 would be from the other side. Now we use the pinch point values. So on the hot stream is going to be 90 and on the cold stream is going to be 80. And after that, we use the supply, the T supply and T target temperatures given in the question. So I went and grabbed it from the other page. But so your T supply in this case is going to be 180. These are your pinch values. And your T target is going to be 60, 60 Celsius. So this is done. Then 150 to 30. T supply being 150 and T target being 30, so this is also done. And then we have 135, then we have the supply is going to be 30 to 135. Remember, we flip it when it comes to the cold side, it starts from the other side. So the T supply is 30 and the T target is 135. So this is also crossed. Same idea for the last one, which is 80 to 140. And by now, you have finished the grid. Of course, you need to remember that this is not cleaned up yet. In part two, you need to match the streams. And before matching, you need to clean it up. 